I'd like to take just a few moments and explain to you the difference and the similarities between amperage, voltage, and wattage, and how they apply to your model railroad. Amperage is also explained in the term amps. Voltage is volts, wattage is watts. Amperage times voltage equals wattage. Amperage is effectively the amount of power available. Amps equals amount. Voltage is the force available. And wattage or watts is the work that can be performed with the amount and the force multiplied together. To give you an example, we have a 135 watt powerhouse here. We know that it's 135 watts, and we know that it puts out 18 volts. So if we take the wattage, 135, and we divide it by the voltage, which is 18, we come up with 7.5 amps. 7.5 amps just happens to be what the circuit breaker on the front of the powerhouse is rated for. It can also be explained, or a, a, a similarity, is a hose and water. To give you an example, the amount of water in the hose would be the amperage. The pressure of that water in the hose would be equivalent to the voltage, and the amount of work that is required to get that volume, or that uh, pressure, and volume, or uh, pressure and volume through the hose is equated in watts or the amount of work that can be done. There's several AC transformers available on the marketplace and what's important is that when you're looking at running accessories and running trains on the main line or on the track you want to look for the higher amperage transformers. So even though a CW80 or an 80 watt transformer will run a typical legacy equipped locomotive um, if you put five or six, seven lighted passenger cars behind it, it's really going to struggle. An 80 watt transformer is a five amp power supply. So seven, six or seven lighted cars could pull upwards of four amps if it has incandescent bulbs in it or lamps in it. So you've got four amps for your lighted cars. You've only got one amp available for the locomotive. You have a, a short, uh, a quick short on the track. Boom, you've kicked the circuit breaker, the train stops. So when you're running your when you're running power for the actual track where you're running the trains, you want to get your amperage up. Seven and a half, ten amps, uh, even using things like a TPC with 280 watt powerhouses will give you 20 amps. Um, your railroad really dictates what you need in terms of power. But a good rule of thumb is to go at least seven and a half amps or higher for the main lines. In, uh, that, that you're, you're going to run your trains on. Accessories, a lot of people have uh, transformers laying around. Some, some people have uh, post-war transformers, uh, transformers from other manufacturers that are anywhere between 2 amps to 5 amps. Um, again, if you know what the output, the voltage is, using something like a digital voltmeter or multimeter, you can measure the terminals on the transformer to determine what the uh, output voltage, maximum output voltage is. You can multiply that voltage by the circuit breaker to determine the wattage. If you know the wattage, but let's say it doesn't have an external circuit breaker, you can take the wattage, divide it by the voltage, and come to the conclusion, or come to the answer of knowing what the amperage available is. Um, as you run more and more accessories or more and more trains off of a transformer, you're taking away those available amps that the transformer provides. So as your railroad grows and accessories, lights, illuminated buildings, animated accessories get added, it's slowly going to take away the available amps. Eventually you'll get to a point where if you have a single transformer powering say a 5 amp transformer powering all of your accessories and you have 30 illuminated buildings, chances are the transformer is just going to short out every time you turn it on because you're taking away more than the 5 amps it has available. 
So as we get into this series of how to wire your railroad and how to adapt your railroad to command control or legacy or conventional operation, that's going to become very important. Um, it's good to know how many amps you have available on a certain circuit. It's good to know how many amps a particular device uses. And this way you can do the math to calculate I have so many accessories that will run off of this transformer, so many accessories off this, and so on. It'll, uh, it'll prevent a lot of headaches in the future. So as we continue on this video series, I um, want you to remember that amperage times voltage equals wattage. Wattage is the amount of work that the transformer will do. Voltage is the amount of force. And amperage is the amount of uh, available power. So again, track where you're running the trains, seven and a half to 10 amps, even upwards of 15 or 20 amps is preferred, uh, especially if you're running in command or in legacy. If you're running conventional, seven and a half amps is sufficient, 10 amps is better. Um, kind of the Tim Taylor theory, the, the more there is, the better you are. Uh, accessories, same thing. It really depends on how many accessories you have, but always keep in mind amperage times voltage equals wattage. As long as you have two, you can determine the third, and then at least you'll know what the transformer is capable of.